Welcome to the Fundamentals of Movement video from Sports Scotland and Sports Coach UK. Today, we're looking at those crucial first steps towards creating physically literate young people with the confidence and competence to take part in physical activity or sport throughout their lives. Getting this right is an essential building block in our efforts to encourage a healthy, active nation. In recent years, several training and development models have been created to show the activities and training children should do at each stage of their development. The best known is probably the Long-Term Athlete Development Model, or LTAD. It lays out activities and training according to specific ages and stages of development. For example, developing balance, coordination and agility between the ages of 6 to 9, or basic sports skills from ages 8 to 12. It's designed to increase the chances of positive experiences in sport and encourage lifelong participation by laying the foundation of confident and competent movement from an early age. Recently, Sports Coach UK have been looking at new research and models developed from the principles laid out in previous models. For example, the Youth Physical Development model has built extensively on previous thinking. It suggests that certain types of training, like strength, should be a crucial part of a child's athletic development from the outset. The work of world-leading experts, Drs Rodri Lloyd and John Oliver of Cardiff Metropolitan University, is based on evidence that young athletes of both genders respond to training throughout childhood and adolescence. It's been designed to show how coaches can make a real difference at every stage of development. The aim of this video is to bring the model to life by explaining the terms it uses and the differences between the male and female versions. Let's start with the left-hand column of the table you can see on the screen. We'll look at each section and explain what the terminology means. Chronological age is just what it sounds like, how old the child is. It has traditionally been the most common way of thinking about developmental stages in children. But children of the same age develop differently. The beginning of puberty, for example, and the start of growth spurt can vary a lot. The youth development model uses maturational status to consider a child's developmental progress. That's separated into three key stages. Prepubertal, pubertal, and postpubertal. Let's look at the models. The lighter shaded areas show pre-puberty, Darker shading indicates adolescence, where we'd expect to see a child's fastest growth rate. That's usually referred to as peak height velocity, or PHV. These phases differ on the male and female models because girls, on average, start puberty and reach peak height velocity about two years before boys. If we use maturational status along with chronological age as a guide to developmental stage, it helps us tailor training to each individual child. Training adaptation refers to the child's response to training and the changes it creates in them. Before puberty, those changes will be largely neural. As puberty advances, they'll be both neural and hormonal. The physical qualities section of the model is the most important. It's where we identify the specific training types to focus on and when. We'll look at it in more detail in the next section. Training structure shows the levels of structure needed as a child develops. For example, at the younger stages, training will mostly be formed around play. It becomes increasingly structured as the child continues to develop and mature, so it focuses on the specific physical skills they need to develop. Let's come back to the physical qualities section of the model. You'll notice there are different sizes of text here. That's important. The bigger the text, the more important the physical quality is and the more likely it will respond to training. So for example, fundamental movement skills and strength are given more importance than all other physical qualities in early childhood. But agility, speed, power and strength become the primary focus from middle childhood and through the adolescent growth spurt. Simply put, the larger the text, the more coaches should focus their training on developing those physical qualities. Let's look at each in turn. Fundamental movement skills, or FMS, are a priority at an early age, but less of a focus once they've been mastered. 
Rapid development of the central nervous system in early childhood supports the learning and development of these skills, which are related to locomotion, manipulation and stabilisation. We're putting some examples on your screen now. Early mastery of fundamental movement skills lets children progress to sport-specific skills. Mastery means being able to perform movements proficiently and with control, even at speed or under pressure. Without it, children can struggle with the more advanced skills. When strength is developed alongside FMS, it creates a foundation for all other forms of exercise and helps children to demonstrate controlled movements. The starting point is to introduce and teach isolated movements that help master simple skills. Long term, you're aiming to teach children to link movements and combine multiple skills. As an example, running links to dribbling, turning and kicking in young footballers. Leaping links to catching, rotation and throwing in netballers. FMS training remains part of the coaching process at every stage of an athlete's development. That offers maintenance and catching up for anyone who missed crucial periods of development and helps support participation, confidence and success. Even top level coaches retain some element of FMS in their training regimes. Once the fundamentals have been mastered, we move on to sport specific skills. These are more advanced and shouldn't be attempted until children are confident in their fundamental skills. Moving on too quickly could actually inhibit children's sporting and physical development. That's why the model shows sport specific skills as less important than fundamentals during the early stages of development. Mobility doesn't take precedence at any stage, but it's an essential aspect of training throughout a young athlete's career and onwards. In this model, it's considered to be most important during the pre-adolescent growth phase. That's in line with previous research on the subject. After that, it's all about maintenance in both adolescents and adults. Agility, the ability to change the body's position efficiently and often with some speed, is particularly important in the middle childhood and adolescent stages of development. It's the time when longer limbs can affect motor control, so coaches might have to work to re-perfect moves and movement patterns that the athlete had already mastered. Speed is also a priority during this stage of development. The model suggests that training for prepubescent children should focus on plyometrics, or jump training, technical competency and sprinting. The same applies to adolescents, who should also focus on strength training to make the most of speed gains. Moving on to power. The youth development model suggests this becomes a priority at the beginning of adolescence and continues into adulthood. Other research has suggested that younger children can train in power development, but with varying degrees of success. It's important to note, though, that previous research says that specialising in power sports before the age of 17 could actually be harmful to both the health and career span of performance athletes. One of the key differences in the youth physical development model is that it recommends strength training as a priority throughout an athlete's career, at every stage of development. For that reason, we're going to take a particularly close look at it. Previous models suggested that the period after PHV was key. However, it's now accepted that children can take part in strength training safely and effectively when monitored and supervised by qualified and skilled coaches. The main reason this model recommends strength training throughout physical development is research that shows a direct link between muscle strength and speed, power, agility, plyometric ability and endurance. Other research suggests that strength contributes heavily to the development of fundamental movement skills. It also helps prevent or avoid sports-related injury. High levels of aerobic fitness and low levels of muscular strength reportedly heighten the risk of fractures in children involved in sports programmes. That's particularly relevant in primary schools, where cardiovascular endurance is usually prioritised over strength, and where diminished levels have been reported over the past decade. It has also been suggested that 50% of overuse injuries could be at least partly prevented through appropriate strength training. 
and strength is particularly important for female athletes who are at greater risk of osteoporosis in later years and who are also more affected by things like an increased knee valgus angle, quadriceps dominant landing strategies and increased fat mass and joint laxity. Strength training in children tends to focus on their ability to perform body weight only exercises with good control, which can form the basis of FMS development and maintenance. With the youth physical development model as their rationale, coaches should ensure they prioritise strength training over other forms of development. Hypertrophy, gains in muscle size, becomes most important during early adolescence, usually after PHV, when an abundance of growth hormones adds significant value to the training. The model considers hypertrophy as an extremely minimal part of early development and of less importance than power, strength and endurance in early adulthood. The final physical qualities in the model are endurance and metabolic conditioning. These are related to training that improves the ability of muscle to use aerobic and anaerobic energy and resist fatigue. Children usually get enough from other activities and training, not to need specific training for this quality. So in the model, it's not a priority for males until the later stage of development. It's not seen as a priority for females at any stage. The Youth Physical Development Model aims to show how training can be shaped for each individual child to suit their age, developmental status and gender. It's designed to provide a clearer focus on individual physical development through sport and physical activity. It allows you, as coaches, to prioritise the physical qualities that correspond to developmental stages, which is one of the key areas where it moves us away from a lot of current thinking and practice. It means that, as coaches, we can help every child develop. We can develop fun and engaging exercises that cover specific qualities simultaneously. We can take a tailored, adaptable approach to every stage of their development and enjoy watching the results take shape over time. Thanks for taking part in this module. You'll find more workshops to support your learning in this area from both Sports Scotland and Sports Coach UK. A list of titles is on your screen now. You can access them through the Sports Scotland and Sports Coach UK websites or apps. Thanks for watching.